Gemini in the 11th house. Shout out to all my Leo Rises in the building. Let's get right into it. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Shout out to everybody in the building tuning in. Uh, this video is Leo in the 11th house for all my Gemini Rises. You may be a Taurus rising. You may be a Cancer rising. But if you have Gemini in the 11th house, this is for you. Gemini in the 11th house. Hey, Gemini in the 11th house. Hey. Now, this is a really, this is a real mixy placement right here. If you ain't from, never not familiar with none with New York, up north, mixy means... It's a lot going on. It's mixy in there. If somebody call me, they're like, yo, boy, we'll pull up to this party. I'm like, how I was looking? They're like, yo, it's mixy in my head. I'm like, oh, there, there's mad people there. There's a lot going on. I'm an airside. I'm in there. All right. But Gemini and 11 house, it gets real mixy. All right. Now, when we look at the 11th house, social house, air house, how we interact, how we interact with the outside world, right? Public relations, our associates, our business partnerships, communities we may be part of, our social life, right? And it's also a spiritually inclined house dealing with abstract thought, the unknown rules of astrology. We're dealing with all different type of, you know, uh, philosophies here, you know, abstract thinking. So we got all that going on in the good old 11th house, all right? And then we have Gemini here, which is an air sign. So Gemini already being an air sign already resonates with this house off rip because it's a trine, all right? So Gemini comes through, comes uh, out of the third house, which is the familiar air house. So these are our cousins, our siblings, our neighbors, our friends, right? People we grew up with. This is our third house, our close relationships. But when we get into the 11th house, these are people out in the world, people we don't know, people that you see in the mall, right? People that you that you just started working at this job and those are the people that's been there the first week and a half, you don't really know them. That's day 11th house people. Those people at your job, that's not there, you don't really know them, but you know them, all right? So, uh, or you go to church, that's kind of your 11th house association right there, right? You, you go, you got some extracurricular activity going on, but you don't really do nothing with these people on a personal level, they 11th house people, all right? Now, first things first, where's Mercury at? We have Gemini in 11th house. You need to know where Mercury at so you understand what's going on, all right, in your 11th house. You understand what frequency vibration is being brought to your 11th house, and you understand what you are attracting when it comes into associations and things you experience going out in the world, dealing with communities and groups. And also important to understand what energies you have a natural access into bringing out into the world. Wherever the house is at, wherever Mercury is at, Mercury deals with communication information intellect channeling connecting so wherever you have mercury at you're already mentally stimulated there your mind is always in that area of life so whatever house that is these are things that naturally get funneled out into the 11th house you jump on youtube you start communicating these things to people in uh you know in some type of interactive space you represent these ideologies or energies out in the outside world some type of shape form this will create opportunities family all right so you need to know where that ruler of the 11th house is at uh, this will also be an energy that you attract in in this house so let's say your mercury's in the fifth house you realize you attract a lot of creative influences or whatnot or people you attract a lot of people through your 11th house that are connected to the things that you're into creatively in some type of shape or form you know you have a you like to party a lot fifth house rules fun you like to party a lot socialize a lot be, be out and about oh yeah so your, your 11th house is gonna be on fire <laughs> You gonna you gonna bump into those circles for sure. You got Mercury in the fourth house. You got Mercury in the fourth house. In some type of shape or form, you're gonna be able to connect to people that relate to things that you've experienced in the home, things that are close to you, close to the heart, uh, things that you feel deeply on, things that are private about you. So let's say you have something that you do in a private, it'll be easy with this placement to find a community or group that does that and they all keep it private. You do private things with them in private. I don't know what it may be, but fourth house deals with privacy, all right? You may be very tight knitted. You're gonna have a real, very uh, sorry guys. You're gonna have a very tight knitted. You, you can you can have like a guard connecting with people in the eleventh house. Eleventh house is ready to be unknown. We already don't know these people, right? So when you got your ruler coming out of the fourth house, uh, how you dealt with relationships in the home is gonna be very important to understand to see how you deal with uh, building new connections out in the world. Um, 
and you have to be conscious of what type of guards you go into. It could be an opportunity, networking opportunity to stand in third, but if you're really coming out the fourth house, it's gonna be a sensitivity dealing with new connections here, all right? Now, you're gonna be able to relate to people on a deep level. You're gonna be able to connect to people out in the world and touch the heart chakra without you even knowing them, depending on things that you might be pushing out in your 11th house, all right? You're gonna be able to channel a lot of things and communicate a lot of things from where you're at that can touch other people and it's gonna hit them deeply, especially if it's dealing with every, anything dealing with spirituality, things about the home environment, helping people with the subconscious in some type of shape or form. That's big. Now, you got Mercury in the first house. Wait, I'm bugging. Wait, it's Ge Gemini. So, okay, yeah, you, you can still have Mercury anyway. Because Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, so I was just making sure I was doing my alignments right. But uh, Mercury in the first house, your personality has a direct access, has direct access to the outside world. You're gonna manifest a lot of situations where certain communities, groups you're a part of, they're gonna pinpoint your personality or things that you're personally into in some type of shape or form. And it's gonna encourage your Mercury in the first house to communicate these things and express them some more and connect things that you're personally into with people that you don't even know. And that could create a lot of opportunity in your life. You're gonna be able to connect to people that's into the things that you're personally into in some type of shape or form. Uh, um, you may find your personality shines the brightest. Uh, <laughs> your personality shines pretty bright when you're in places where people don't know you for some reason. It's like, damn, my personal friends, my third house friends, my, who are, the person I'm dating, this, that, and the third people I go to school with, they know I all rap. But when I get into 11th house spaces, this, that, and the third, or, and somebody from my third house, seventh house, whatever house creates opportunity or something, maybe creates opportunity for me to rap in front of people I don't know. They uplift me more than anybody else I know. So you may experience some of that energy. It's like the 11th house be embracing you personally. A lot of your personal life be connected to things out in the world. You, you Your personal life has a lot to do with things outside of the world. It's like your personal life is connected to a lot of things outside of what's close to you. Um, uh, got Mercury in the 8th house in some type of shape or form, you're gonna be able to take a lot of the things that your Mercury is always on that thinks deep and dark about it, whatever that may be. It also depends on what sign is there. Those are gonna be the things that you think deeply and darkly about. So if you got uh, if you got Gemini in the 11th house, then that means you got, what's the mutable sign before Gemini? Gemini is the spring mutable sign. Uh, Pisces, so you got Pisces in the eighth house. So you think, <laughs> so you think deep and dark about things with your imagination. Deep, dark, intense thoughts about manifesting your imagination. Deep, dark, uh, you have some dark dreams a lot of the time. You have a lot of nightmares, a lot of dr dark dreams about things, dark concepts in your dreams, and this, that, and the third. Uh, you know, when it comes into a connection, when it comes to understanding things about your insecurities, your subconscious, you are very, you could penetrate very deep and do a lot of self-healing when it comes to your ability to even mentally analyze what's going on in your subconscious with your spiritual baggage here. It's easier for you to dissect these things with others too because Pisces deals with connecting to others. So if you have Pisces in, in Mercury in Pisces in the eighth house, sometimes you probably don't even be wanting to know what people be thinking or be wanting to have people open up to you, deep, dark things, secrets to you, this, that, and the third. You probably don't be wanting that sometimes, but you may attract that. The, the, the collective consciousness always pulling their mercury, their deep mercury thoughts and feelings on you. So if you got mercury in the eighth house in some type of shape or form, those experiences right there, whether the things you learn from other people's deep, dark experiences, the way you dissect uh, your past experiences, dealing with trauma, transformations, this, that, and the third, spiritual baggage, right? Your And the ideologies and philosophies that you may build out of these experiences these may be things you have a direct access, not may, you're gonna have a direct access into connecting it to some type of group community and you could have a very transformative effect with how you communicate, relate ideologies or just or experience that you may have with transformative things, things in your past, things with the subconscious, this, that, and the third things with your create, creative abilities, spiritual experiences, spices here. You could communicate that in 11th house and that could get build a lot of transformation and just encourage a lot when it comes into groups and communities, this, that, and the third, so that one get deep, all right? It's just that you may be real intense doing this if you got Mercury in the eighth house. Might be a little intense doing this and it may rub the wrong shoulders. This is a little square energy here, but it's gonna bring, people are gonna really appreciate you for being able to communicate and relate things that could transform transform their lives um, or relate to transformations that y'all both have. Let me do one more. Mercury in the 
Hey, you're in the sixth house. You got Mercury in the sixth house. What, okay, this is a nice alignment. Now, when you got Mercury in the sixth house, we already know Mercury's home here, right? It's home there. So these people are very mentally adept when it comes into scheduling, organizing, or putting things in their place. They could be very tech, good with technical things. Uh, they may not be the best scheduling and organizing type people, but that's gonna be a strong part of their nature when they got Mercury in the sixth house, all right? They're gonna feel uh, mentally disturbed or you know they're gonna feel discouraged when they feel like they don't have things in their proper place so that's why they do make natural efforts to want to schedule organize the standard third they're gonna be great with critiquing analyzing things like i said they may be very good with technical things these people are very book smart you know they, a lot of them really good students um uh so with all the experiences you done built with Mercury in the sixth house, manifest situations where people need to use your mind to help structure, stabilize something, or use your mind in order to uh, criti critically analyze, critically think about something, critically observe something, uh, all the things that you done structured and built, all the different experiments and things your Mercury has been a part of in the sixth house, different projects it's been a part of and gained different experience from these things. The sixth house deals with projects and building and structuring. All of these things, different jobs and workplaces you've been at as well too. Six House deals with wellness as well. So things that's been in your routine, wellness practices, and what you've experienced and learned. All that Six House mumbo jumbo, things you learn from your workplaces in life. In some type of shape form, these things, some of these themes may be called on to be connected to the 11th house. And when it comes into the things that you build, structured, have experience dealing with projects or whatnot, or a project you may have want to structure in the Six House, you have Mercury in the sixth house to give direct access to be able to pull on other people that share the same type of mind, intellect to help put hands on that project with you. So this is why I really, this, I like this alignment. Um, and then in some type of shape or form through the experiences you done built in, in the sixth house, you'll be able to construct certain things that'll help other people in the 11th house be able to use that format, that system, that schedule, right? That building block in order to build some stability in their lives and that could create whatever it creates, community, group, business, this, that, and the third, all right? So those are just some examples. Gotta know where Mercury is at to understand. So I just use them examples so you understand no matter if I didn't say where your Mercury is at, you'll be able to apply it from like, okay, this is the things that I have natural access to communicating, relating, and pushing out, but this is also what I'll attract in this house as well. Now, Leo Rising's. Leo, you got to love them. You got to love them. Sometimes they could be, uh, you know what, we're not going to. <laughs> I'm not going to, I don't got nothing crazy to say for Leos if it's not directly educational. I love my Leo Rising, all right? Charm, charisma, personality, intuitiveness on a thousand. Now, when we look at... When we look at, and I had, I, made, I had to make sure I put intuitiveness in there because not every Leo Rise is super expressive and flashy and this, that, not every Leo Rise is like that. But when we look at Gemini in the third house, you got this Leo Rising sun personality here. You got Leo in the first house, so you're gonna manifest some type of spotlight, attention, eyes on you, center stageness in your personal life, in your personal life regardless. And this creates a, sh a sextile right to Gemini in the 11th house. Now we know Gemini is flexible, adaptable as the air sign. We already understand that here. This Leo personality naturally creates opportunities to connect, relate, and deal with a bunch of different faces and places in their life in the 11th house. All right. Leo risings be knowing mad people. Leo sons be knowing mad people. All right. And if you're close to a Leo rising Leo sun, you may realize that they're not as, they're not super like stable. What's the right word? Yeah. Their 11th house is not really stable. You'll realize they'll, they'll know a lot of people. They have a lot of connections, a lot of resources, and especially if they're business oriented and whatnot. But um, you'll realize they won't make no real commitment to any of these groups. Gemini knows how to pick, dissect, analyze, which group friendship resource works for this project this that and third this aspiration i have in my first house okay so damn leo rises man y'all be knowing everybody in their moms all right leo rises when a leo rising gets into a creative endeavor right and what's the opposite house from here uh fifth um fifth house right and what's what's there uh what's the name uh, Gemini and the Sagittarius. Before we deep, but before we go there, 
let's say this Leo rises into some type of creative aspiration, okay? Let's say they start this aspiration around 21 years old. It's, it's, it's gonna be a matter of time till that thing, that creative aspiration that Leo rising has, it's gonna be a matter of time till they start being able to connect to so many different other people in the 11th house that's into that, learn from these other people, get game from these other people. All right, now this is the thing here with Gemini in 11th house, cause you got this influx of different relationships, you also have to have discernment on the type of advice and guidance you are allowing yourself to receive and be proactive about when you got Gemini in 11th house. That's, that's another thing here. That's another thing here. It's Gemini. Everybody gonna make things sound good to the Leo. And then another thing about the Leo and the sun is almost like it's the sun. You want to show your appearance to the sun. This is this concept could kind of display why Leo attract competitive energy, but like Leo radiates the sun in the first house. So Leo could have a presence about being seen even when Leo rises, even when they're not trying to be seen. <laughs> so that could give off an aura to other people with them wanting to sh show their, sh their son and whatnot. Them wanting to have the Leo rising's attention. Okay, and when you get into Gemini 11th house, you gotta be careful how people make things talk and make things seem and persuade you to get a, be a part of things at times Leo rising because that may be their way of trying to be seen in front of you, make it seem like they could they could do something. You know, Gemini, I, listen, Gemini, that's my cousin. I'm a Libra, Gemini is my cousin, but and my mama a Gemini. Like me and Gemini's, I came out of a Gemini womb, all right? So anything I say about Gemini's come from here, but boy, Gemini's know how to make some ish sound good. All right? They know how to make some ish sound good. <laughs> and when you got it in the 11th house, you gonna, Leo Rising, you create so much opportunities in your life, being able to connect to different people, being able to, uh, how many times Leo Rising's, you manifest a situation in your life where, like I said, an endeavor, an aspiration, a business to stand a third, a hustle, or whatever you're into, pushes you out into the world. You you meet a lot of people, and how many times y'all don't want bringing something back to y'all third house? Like, yo, bros, I've been hustling this that third. I met some dudes out in Cali, and they doing this over here, and I realized, like, y'all can bring this back to New York. Anybody doing this over? We could get on that. How many times that happened? Leo Rises' life with Gemini in the eleventh house. Leo Rises can't go nowhere without somebody trying to communicate to them, relate to them. They naturally find themselves getting into the mix with Gemini here. So when you talking about um, filtering out information that you receive here, being discerning about the information you receive here, yeah, Leo Rising, you, you already know what's up. You already know what's up, right? Probably thought about so many different examples in the past two minutes, thinking about how many positive and negative situations, how much fruitful and detrimental situations you got into trusting people in 11th house because it always has the same intriguing mercury mercury the mind mental stimulation intriguing it's gonna have an intriguing entrance speaking about you know intriguing and uh you know leo rising having gemini here man there needs to be some stimulation some mental stimulation when it comes into Leo Rises being a part of groups and communities, they get bored quick here. Dealing with social activity, leaving parties early, get they they friend get them to join some club. You got this. You got this. You got this friend or somebody you work with been trying to get you to join some club so bad. Leo Rising is like, is it really? Is it really lit? Is it really lit? Like, is it really? that wavy as you're making it seem, you realize Leo, sons of your eyes, they attract the sun in their life. So they have lively lives. So they be knowing where it's at. So when somebody comes to them trying to show them where it's at, it's almost like it's hard to impress them. Like, you know, you try to go to a Leo, sons of your eyes and tell them about the vacation you went on this day. It's like, oh, they, oh yeah, the Bahamas, yeah, that's dope. Where you stayed at? Yeah, I stayed in two spots. Over. It's like, damn, Leo, son of your, you did everything. Damn. You really live a full life of sun. A lot of action, a lot of things going on. It's very lively on your side of town. So that's why in 11th house, <laughs> that's why in 11th house, 
they a part of them. They got this friend telling them, come to this club. I'm trying to make, well, what's a, what's a extra activity, extracurricular activity your coworker will be telling you come come to? Like this, I don't know. Some Something that they go to every Tuesday, Thursday nights or something. Some karaoke spot, it's lit, it's mad. It's mad joints over there, bro. The drink speed is off, this, that, and the third. Like it's fire in there, bro. Leo Ross be like, all right, but whatever. Man, if that joint is a, it, you got this much time to impress that Leo wherever you invited them, the Leo Razi. You got this much time with Gemini in 11th house because they on to something else. Somebody else might be texting them while they at the event like, yo, where you at? Man, bro, pull up to this joint. Like, I don't know who got you over there. It's lit over here. Now the Leo son, Leo Razi going, that's, gonna confirm the example of what I was just saying they already got sunlight uh, coming to them like they know where it's lit at is a lot going on with Gemini 11th house all right so then boom <laughs> now they on they probably tell the person that brought them they're like yo bro come with me bro we out of here bro this spot weak as hell we out now Leo Sun Leo rising bring you to the joint this ain't about Leo Suns it's just that the rising's life path falls into some of the life path of the Sun person so when it comes into uh, that, now you got the Leo Rising bringing you to another spot. It's way more lit, way more going on. But the Leo not even mad. The Leo Rising not even going crazy in there. Leo Rising like is chilling. You having the time of your life. You going crazy like, bro. You got two joints dancing on you with the bottle. Like, yo, bro. Come on. Like, hey, never tell me about this spot. Huh? Hey, shake that ass, bitch. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> you got your, you got your bro in the spot going crazy. He, he, night not even over here. Already thinking in his head like, oh my god, I can't wait to come back to this motherfucker next week. This is my new spot. You feel me, Leo? But Leo rising in there chilling like, bro, because this was going on. It's Gemini Eleven House. This day life, they got a lot going on here. It's a lot going on. So that's why when it comes into anything that the Leo Rising do, as far as group activity, as they mature and get older, the Leo Rising, you know, even though I'm telling y'all, you have to have discernment here with what y'all filter. You naturally got, you guys naturally do that. Because Gemini and 11th house will get you into all different type of things. Especially depending on things aspect in this house and where your Mercury is at. What's affecting your Mercury? You got bad aspects to your Mercury. Squares, oppositions. Be aware of that. That'll be some of the energies that's filtered, being filtered in. Things people will try to communicate and relate around them energies to get you to participate in things. All right. Um, all right. So yeah, Leo Raz, they're gonna get bored. Short time, short attention span when it comes into groups community work anything that they're dealing with other people working with other people has to be things that can keep can keep them stimulated there all right now you will see leo rises here like this is kind of the cousin of the concept we just got off of but they need to be surrounded by intellectuals they need to be surrounded by people that can brainstorm that can create new ideas the sun in the first house influence in the first house leo rising we got vision we got natural vision all day, every day. <clears throat> all right. So when Leo wants to connect and participate with others or just having Gemini in 11th house, there's going to be somewhat of a crave or throughout experiences from interacting and dealing with other people, group work, group efforts and whatnot. You'll start to realize that, yo, I need to be surrounded by other people that can add thought onto my vision, that can add more perspective onto what I got going on here this next third. But on the same side of the, on the other side of the coin, you have to make sure that you can accept critique here. So you may want that addition of thought, that addition of air to help push some fire, help push a vision, right? You, you, air can gas the fire up some, it could burn it out too, but at the same time, it help it travel. So Leo Risen's could, could love all of that. All right, it could love all of that. And then you got, what's the name? Uh, what's in the third house? Um, Libra. You got Libra in the third house. 
So you see when it comes into Leo and their companions, all right? Leo and loyalty. Why do you think loyalty is so big with Leo? Because they are dealing with a sense of relatability in their life and they make things grow. So when it comes to the 11th house, your personal life can, all, you just being a Leo rising, you could already have an influ influence of wanting to make things grow, right? Wanting to give things some sunlight and when it gets into the 11th house, you have to make sure that, uh, uh, or Leo Risings would want to have these people around them, all right? It's not even about them making sure. They're going to already want to desire, have a desire to have intellectuals, people that can add perspectives to things, but the critique, the critique, the critique, that critique. Leo Risings can't get too caught up on people's critique, the outside world's thoughts about things that you've got going on in your first house. Wherever Mercury's influence that, there's going to be some critical analysis about what you pushed out in that area. Okay? So if it's amongst the people that you're building, connecting, and working with, you got to be able to accept the critique there. It's like you can't be picking and choosing Leo Rising about when you want perspective added onto something, right? If there's not a sense of praise or in the light you want to see it, you have to make sure that that's still the same position you wanted to hold that person in, right? You admire this person this, that, and the third for their intellect or their ability to connect and relate in that manner. But when they have a critique that may not align with something, make sure it don't hit the pride button a little a little too hard, okay? We know pride is the infamous word associated with Leo placements. Okay, now, uh, Need to be around other intellectuals that can add on to their visions, expression, personal aspirations. Have to be aware of advice here at the same time. Yep, we went over that. Likes to surround themselves around smart people, intellectuals. This is why Leo placements easily network or get in touch with people in their field. Sunlight is easy to, easy to see in both air houses. So keep that in mind. Libra in the third, uh, uh, Gemini in the, um, in the 11th, and the sextile in both. So Leo Risings, I don't care about how y'all feel about, I don't care what insecurities you may be dealing with with personal expression. Because once again, just because you're a Leo Rising, everybody would think you're so expressive and ah, ah, you, you this artist expressive or you just an explosion when you walk in the room. It's not, that's, we all have different things going on with different energies at the same time. But this is why I want to make sure anybody that's watching this video that's a Leo Rising, you have to understand that you have to embrace expression in all levels, but these houses create so much portals for opportunities to develop or manifest out of your expression. So whenever you feel called to put something in the light, this personal aspiration, this standard third, you wanna have your eyes open, your ears wide open when it comes into what's attracted, you know, from places that you're unfamiliar with, people that you're unfamiliar with, okay? Peer pressure. Their social circle is curious, but also informed. So yes, you'll be around, surrounded by a lot of people in the 11th house that are informative. You know, they have a lot of experience with things that they've done. People that you know, know a lot of people. You run into a lot of those. Like, yo, oh yeah, I know what's the name of the standard. Oh yeah, my bro, is that you. You run into that all day, every day, right? Leo, suddenly arrives. But when it gets into, like I said, that's people trying to show their sunlight to you, so they could do something, be something. But um, when we get into... Uh, when we get into the, the peer pressure, right? Man, Gemini's is very curious, right? That's why I said there has to be a sense of intrigue coming to the Leo rising if it's coming from an unknown space. There has to be some level of intrigue or community or group that they're a part of. But... You have to be mindful. You have to be mindful of how the curiosity of others influences you to participate with something Leo rising here. All right. You have Gemini, Gemini, your 11th house. You have people all day, every day like you. I wonder, you know, they always talk about if you jump over that, over that gate of that, that neighbor that lives there, they keep this, that, and this, that, and the third there. Everybody's always scared to jump the gate. You want to go jump the gate and see what's over there? Like, you you have those type of friends, Leo Rises, when you're growing up and shit. <laughs> like, I ain't that curious. Okay, sometimes I'll be walking by, I'll be hearing shit barking in there. I'll be hearing weird things. I'm not that curious. 
You gotta let people know that, Leo Rising, with Gemini and the 11th. Okay? So, any form of peer pressure that follows that up, like I said, you, a lot of you guys are adults watching this, so you could probably reflect, you know, Gemini, deal with your third house. So, these circumstances can be very relatable, relatable to childhood experiences in some type of shape or form. A lot of your third house friends connected you in some type of shape or form to uh, having Gemini 11th house. It's not your third house friends get collected to connected to 11th house. You bring a lot of your third house you bring a lot of your 11th house to your third house friends. All right? So it's like, like I said, having Gemini in the third house, y'all manifest a lot of situations where uh, an en endeavor y'all are a part of and participating in will connect you to other people who are into things. You get that information. And now when you come back to your crib, your first house, your third house, you got new things from the 11th house for them. They're like, yo, where you, got, where you get the scoop from? You're like, I be out and about people. I be interact. I be moving and grooving. All right? So that's what we got going on there. Business groups, social groups will have critiques for you, may humble the lion from time to time, but your team will see everything, all right? So teams that you're a part of, a lot of times this placement allows them to have great perspective over things that you're doing. So once again, let's say you're an artist, you got a producer, manager, engineer, they're most likely gonna have, you know, uh, collectively good perspective on things details about what you got going on the brand the business your expression so uh you want to continuously discern the people you surround yourself in general because there's a lot of opportunity to have built strong teams here like i wouldn't be surprised if any type of celebrity or any type of like artist or whatever that always shots out their team and has a really good team though like has a really good manager a really good producer a really good engineer to stand third this stand and third and and we get to we start knowing them for that like we start knowing like yeah their producer go crazy like yeah that's what what the name what's his name that manages this that like lebron like how lebron's maverick carter and and uh rich paul his manager all the, his agent how like they got sunlight because of him like these situations a lot of y'all can manifest these situations you put a lot of other people on in these type of ways like i said leo sun leo energy sun energy make things grow okay now uh understanding other people's visions that you work with right so you're known for bringing the vision and awareness a lot of the time and then people can add on add on to the sunlight but there's gonna be times where you may not have the vision leo rising you may be seeing something else and you're fixed fire your personality is fixed fire so sometimes personally when you're paying attention to something you have an awareness for something it don't even be about what other people what other vision people have at that point it's like, wait, wait, hold on. Stop all the side talk. I, I'm talking about what I'm looking at right here. This awareness. Pay attention to this, y'all. Pay attention. So you got to be careful of having those blinders on around the same people that you trust their judgment because that can be very frustrating on them. All right? And then let's say you are a Leo Rise and has a lot of popularity, a lot of status, a lot of notoriety for something. Now you're, the sunlight could get a little egotistical here. All right, I'm trying my best not to drag you. Okay, try my best, but you know what I mean, all right? So just make sure that just not, it just, it just doesn't become overwhelming for those that you have in your social circle, right? Especially like in a networking business space. Um, can find difficulty committing to certain groups and communities. So yeah, it's almost like y'all be in replace mode. It's not even about replace mode. It's, it's, it's a combination of things, the stimulation, the trusting the, the trusting the discernment of other people's critiques and, and the way they observe things. Just having Gemini here and the influx of different relationships, people you come across when you connect. So it's like, it's like at the same time here, it's like, this is, if a drug dealer has this placement, he could be selling weed and then the person he getting his weed from, right? The person he's copping the weed from so he could go sell, it's like, let's, let's say that person, he builds a relationship with that person but something go left with that person. Most likely, this Leo Rising will be able to get their hands on another plug. And then they could be in a space where it's like, damn, I need another plug by the end of the week. They'll get the plug. And then when they get the plug, that same day, they may get another opportunity for another plug. And they'll be like, damn, this plug offering this, that, and the third. Like, damn, I just, I just locked in with this plug. Damn, like, should I, like, you know, rock? So... Y'all run into situations like that. So there needs to be a sense of patience at times dealing with the people that's in and out your life 
in some type of shape or form. You don't want to get into replace mode or always thinking that there's going to be another another substitute for a certain position of a person you had in your life that you may have been building and connecting with in some type of shape or form. Learn to honor the relationships in the present when you see the value in them, all right? Knowing how much goes on with mutable air in your 11th house, all right? It's almost like you got to take, you got to make an effort to establish and stabilize relationships that you do value here. Some of the people you, you may manifest situations, it's another situation. You may manifest situation where, you know, you get a commitment, you finally get into a situation where you're committed to doing something with somebody else, but that person, like you need that person, let's say you, you really believe in something they got going on, there's a resource they really got going on, something like that, and y'all have this connection, this exchange, you can manifest a situation with Gemini 11th house, this person deals with a lot of activity. This person dealing with too much relationships and this different business partnerships, and you gotta tell them like, I need your concentration, your focus with this right here, all right? We gotta work on this album, and you doing this, that, and the third. Like, I need you. I need you to be able to organize and schedule your time for this. So you may have to. You may have those type of associates at times, right? It's almost like okay. It's like perfect analogy. I'm rolling today, RZA, right? All y'all RZA from the Wu Tang Clan. Some of y'all may have watched the Wu Tang. I'm a big Wu Tang fan, so like from Yay High, but. They just had the, uh, you know, the Wu-Tang series and whatnot on Hulu. And it really displays how RZA dealt with a lot of frustration. It's how many members, 11 members, however many members. And um, uh, they showed him many scenes where he's dealing with the frustration, trying to get all of them on the same page, right? Especially when they get successful, you know? He's trying to get the album done. ODB's partnering with Mariah. Met the man is dealing with his stardom over here. You know, some of these dudes back in the block. Like, like, so it's like, damn, you could deal with some of that sometimes when you, especially when you're in a leadership position, Leo Sun Leo Rising. You could deal with some of that with Gemini here. Could almost be like, you could say some with the negative here. All right. So, family. Wait, is that, is that, is that, is that what I got? Is that what I got? That's what I got. That's what, okay, last thing. Last thing, right? You guys need a sense of diversity here, but quality over quantity in this area. Quality over quantity. Cause there's such an influx of people in this area, sometimes you may start to rally with a lot of people. You may start to identify yourself amongst a group of people and like i said because you're able to create opportunities to assemble teams associates that do have great perspectives that you can honor and value and trust you have to be very wise about how much people you feel like you need around you at times of the horizon you know quality over quantity these four or five however many people that i connect with build with this and the third i entrust them do this and the third and you got to know when to not over add on to that all right and sometimes that's hard because like i said you just got to plug set another opportunity for a plug two opportunities for a plug just after you got one so sometimes it can make you feel like you have to add on to the team add on to this and the third so sometimes you need to know like nah it's the cypher is complete the 360 is whole right now let's let's build from here and you're intuitive, so you'll feel it. But Gemini can stimulate this a lot. You That second plug, that third plug, that person that you don't really need to add on may have an intrigue with how they communicate, relate, persuade you to participate with something with you. So that's why this is kind of easier said than done at times, okay? But that's what I got going on. This, wow, long video. I think I spent a lot of time with some examples in the beginning. But uh, shout out to my Leo Risings in the building. Like I said, you may be a... a Taurus rising, maybe a Cancer rising, but if you had Gemini in the 11th house, this video's for you. The Boro, the Lucky Libra is up out of here. Peace.